Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service this morning at Oak Grove. Unfortunately, because of some COVID concerns, a uh, local COVID outbreak, we've had to close the sanctuary for today. Uh, I do apologize. Obviously, it's not something I wanted to do, especially with the momentum that we've had going on with the church. I was ready to see you guys again. I was ready to be in service with you again for us to worship and, and to bring in uh, just usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, we're going to have church anyway today. And I appreciate you tuning in, whether you're tuning in live or you're tuning in later on and, and checking it out later on. Thank you so much for being here today. Just have a, a couple of announcements I want to make, and then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get on with the rest of the service. A couple of things that I want to make mention to you. First of all, we will not have service, obviously, today. And then we've also decided that we will not have services coming Wednesday. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in this area, there's been a little bit of an outbreak of COVID. And we just want to be safe. We're not living in fear. We're not concerned uh, and just looking for excuses to not have church. We just are looking out for everyone's safety. And I know a lot of people have been vaccinated already. They might be thinking, well, I'm fine to go to church because I've been vaccinated. The problem is, is we hear stories of people that have been vaccinated that are still coming down with the virus. Uh, there's different strands that are out now that the vaccine doesn't seem to be touching. So just to make sure that everybody is as safe as possible, we decided to close the service for today and for this coming Wednesday in the sanctuary. My prayer is that we can be back together next Sunday morning. So just uh, stay tuned to our Facebook page, and I will make sure to let everybody know a little bit later on in the week if we're going to proceed with services in the sanctuary or we still need to close off for another week of quarantine. But I have a couple of announcements that I want to make. First of all, this coming Saturday, the 31st, is my walk that I'm going to be doing that I announced a few weeks ago, uh, praying for Macedonia. And that's going to begin at 5 a.m. And I'm going to be down at the Macedonia sign over by, I believe it's called Mike's Auto, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on 17. Let me just say, uh, before I go any further, uh, I've had a lot of people who have been making suggestions that I find a different route because 17 is obviously a very busy highway. There's not much of a shoulder to it. And so for safety concerns, uh, they were saying, you know, you need to find a different route to go. First of all, thank you so much for your safety concerns. I obviously greatly appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad you don't want me dead. And I, uh, I, my family is too. Uh, but what I do want you to understand is that everything that I'm doing with this prayer walk is something that God has spoken directly to my heart. In fact, I was telling my wife yesterday that I don't remember a time in my ministry where God has been so detailed about what I was to do. And that excites me because it means that if he's giving me that many details and saying, this is exactly how you're going to do it, I believe that's because something amazing and incredible is going to happen due to my obedience from this and due to your prayers from this. And we've actually got people all over the country that are praying for that day, praying for my safety, but also praying that God will, will use that, uh, that obedience that, uh, that I'm giving and the sacrifice that I'm giving and that God will take that and that strongholds be broken in this community and that those who are not saved will come to know Jesus Christ because of the ministry here at Oak Grove. And I've told other pastors in the area, I said, look, I, I, I want it to happen everywhere. If you're a Bible-believing church, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, I want souls to come into your church. It doesn't just have to be Oak Grove, but obviously I want us to have an effect on our community. So we've got people that are praying all over the country for that, uh, that, that revival is going to take place. And I believe in the name of Jesus that we're going to see something phenomenal, something that we've never seen before. You know, in, in Isaiah 43, 19, it says, Behold. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? Now it shall spring forth. And, and that new thing is, I don't want to copy somebody else's revival. I want our revival. I want what God has in store for us. And so I, I truly believe that's going to be happening. Please continue to be praying. Uh, my, my wife and I have been discussing about uh, the entire walk. And, you know, of course, I'll be walking it by myself. And that's, you know, that's the way that God has just instructed me to do this. But... Uh, she is going to be updating people on Facebook, not at 5 in the morning, but she's going to be updating our page on Facebook as far as where we are. And we are going to let you know 
when I'm getting close to the coming into the sanctuary because the way I'm ending my walk is I'm going to walk back up uh, Lonnie Road, walk into the parking lot of the church, into the uh, uh, into the church, and then I'm going to come down the middle aisle into the sanctuary, and I'm going to come to the altar, and I'm going to pray before I end. I'm going to be praying the entire time, but God has just instructed me I'm to come right here, and I'm to pray at the very end. And just to let you know, if you are wanting to come and wanting to be here and already be in prayer before I walk in the sanctuary, I think that would be a great thing. And if if not, we're actually going to live stream just the part of me coming in the sanctuary so that you can see it if you're at home. And I believe that there's going to be people that are going to come and are going to be here. And we're going to start praying. Uh, I'm going to continue praying. But we're going to be praying when I walk up to this altar. And I believe we're going to see a move of God in this place next Saturday morning or afternoon, whenever it is that I come into the sanctuary. And I believe there's going to be people that are going to be watching on Facebook Live. And they're going to see the move of God. And they're going to feel pulled to get into their cars and to come to the church and to join up with us. Because they're seeing what God is doing. Now, you might say, well, that's kind of wishful thinking. Maybe it is. Maybe nobody will be here. Maybe I'll just come up and I'll, I'll pray for a few minutes and then I'll pass out or something. I don't know. But what I do know is this. God is getting ready to do something phenomenal. Something that I believe this community has never seen. And it's not because of me, but it's because of obedience and it's because of doing what God has instructed me to do the way that God has instructed me to do it. So those of you who have, have said you want to walk this way or that way, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. And I, I don't take that and just push that aside. But just understand that God has given me directions. And uh, just as he was very specific with building of the tabernacle, just as he was very specific about Noah building the ark. I've got, and I'm not trying to put myself to that level, of course, but he was that specific with me about what I was to do and where I was to walk. And just remember Ezekiel 14, 5, which is our theme verse uh, for the walk that says, I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people. So please be in prayer for me. I know that was a long announcement, but that's a pretty big deal about what's going to be happening on Saturday. A couple other things I do want to mention, of course, next Sunday, assuming that we are able to have service together, next Sunday, August 1st, is going to be Mission Sunday. And please don't forget that you've only got, uh, I think, this month and next month left. If I'm not mistaken, it, it, it ends in, uh, uh, in October, starts the new it's either October starts the new mission giving year or November does, but you've only got a couple months left. If there's somebody that you're wanting to give a, a world missions offering to uh, in honor of them, rather, if you're wanting to give a world missions offering in honor of that person, please see Sister Glenda. She wants to take down their name. We're going to have a nice little slideshow video uh, the uh, first Sunday. Uh, it's Like I said, it's either going to be October or November, uh, whatever that first Sunday to kick off the new missions year is. We're going to have a nice slideshow video. As a matter of fact, if you have already honored somebody or you're planning on honoring them, we need to get their picture. Let me see. I'm trying to look at my phone since I don't have an actual bulletin in front of me. We need to receive a photo, at least one photo of that person, no later than September 12th. That will give us time to put everything together. I believe it is the first Sunday of October that we'll be doing this. So please make sure you get that uh you get that photo to us. Please make sure you put in that offering uh, to honor that person. And I know that God is going to bless you for that. And thank you already for all the missions offering that you have given. Uh, I'm so proud of our church because we're making a difference on the mission field. Amen. Uh, a couple of the quick announcements I want to mention. Uh, our ladies will be uh, going to the fall fling. That will be coming up. Uh, let me get in here. August 7th. Uh, so that's. Uh, and I just got rid of my bulletin. Hold on one second. August 7th, the, uh, the women's ministry is going to be having their spring fling, or fall fling rather. That's going to be, I keep saying spring fling. Uh, it, it rolls off the tongue better than fall fling. But that's going to be at Hickory Grove on August 7th. And uh, if you have any questions about that, you can see Sister Crystal. But uh, our ladies are actually supposed to be singing a song. We're supposed to be doing a, a, well, we, you, are supposed to be doing a praise and worship song that day. And so on Wednesday, August 4th, 
at, at the Wednesday night, August 4th at 6 p.m., Sister Wendy is going to be practicing with any ladies that want to be a part of that group, that want to sing. Now, you might say, well, I'm not part of our praise team. It doesn't matter. If you're going to be at Spring Fling and you would like to sing, then I said it again, Fall Fling. And Crystal's back behind the phone just laughing at me. Just get her, you understand what I mean. But with the Fall Fling, if you're wanting to sing that song or sing that song with our group, come out on Wednesday, August 4th at 6 p.m. and you'll be having your practice as far as that. Also wanted to mention, since we're talking about women's ministries, so I don't have to say Spring Fling or Fall Fling again, uh, our retreat, uh, Women's Ministries Retreat, is going to be September 24th through the 26th. And the fee to attend that is $100. And you need to get that Sister Crystal as soon as possible. Uh, as a matter of fact, your money needs to be turned in. And you need to let Sister Crystal know that you're wanting to attend no later than Wednesday, August 18th. Please make sure you get that in because if there's rooms that they've got reserved that they're not going to need, they need to know that so they're not having to pay for those rooms. But we also want to make sure we've got plenty of room and that everybody's able to attend. So if you're wanting to attend the Women's Fall Retreat, and that is going to be September 24th through the 26th, please see Sister Crystal and she will help you out with that. Just got a couple more things. I appreciate you bearing with me. I'm still going to get you out of here before noon, probably. But... Uh, we also, on Sunday morning, August 8th, so it's going to be two weeks from today, uh, we're going to be having a back-to-school bash, and a, well, back-to-school Sunday, back-to-school bash uh, on that Sunday morning. On that Sunday morning, we're going to, uh, I'm going to be trying to gear my sermon towards it and everything, but we're going to come together, and at the end of the service, any student, whether it's pre-K all the way up to college students, or, or technical school students, any student that's in the sanctuary, we're going to bring them up and we're going to lay hands on them and we're going to pray for them. And we're going to pray God's protection on them. We're going to pray as they go into the school year that God is going to give them the wisdom and the knowledge and, and the, uh, the strength that they need to be able to get through the school year. So uh, that's going to be a very important time. But also at that service, at the end of the service, we're going to be handing out school supplies to those that need it. I know... Uh, uh, A.T. Bonner, we received something that said all they need is a backpack, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. Uh, that's all that we've got to get because the school's actually providing all the rest of the supplies. But there's other schools in the county that they need supplies, the kids need supplies. So we're going to be handing those out on that Sunday. But then after the service, we're actually going to, everybody's going to go to the Family Life Center, and we're just going to have a nice time. Uh, we're going to have hot dogs and hamburgers and popcorn and snow cones, you know, all that great stuff that kids absolutely hate to eat. They'd rather have broccoli. But we're going to have that over at the Family Life Center. I believe there's all, we're also going to be showing a movie in the gym. Uh, we haven't decided what movie yet. Uh, a couple of us have, have suggested some horror flicks, but I think we're probably going to stay away from that and make something more family and kid-friendly. But we're going to have a, a great time uh, together just fellowshipping as we get ready for our kids to go back to school because it's only a couple of weeks away. So uh, keep that in mind. That's for August 8th. The last thing I wanted to mention uh, before we go to prayer is I'm going to be offering an opportunity for water baptism in the, the very near future, possibly looking at the end of August, beginning of September, somewhere in that area. We're going to be offering an opportunity for you to be baptized in water. Now, maybe you've never been baptized before. Maybe you've been saved, but you've never gone through baptism. This is a time for you to go ahead and do this. This doesn't get you saved. I want to make sure you know that. Water baptism doesn't get you saved. You have to be saved first before you enter into water baptism. And as a matter of fact, if you're interested in it, you need to come and see me so that I can have a chance to talk with you to make sure you fully understand what it is we're looking at. But also, if you're someone who maybe you got baptized a long time ago, and maybe you turned away from God and came back to Him, and, and you want to rededicate your life, if you're interested in being baptized as a way of just starting over, as a way of saying, God, from this point forward, I'm a new person, and I'm dedicating myself to you. Please come see me. Uh, the more people that we have uh, on that day, the better it's going to be. We want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity. It's not something we do uh, every month or something we do every uh, every week. It's going to be something we do sporadically throughout the year. So you want to take advantage of this time and you want to get baptized. Come see me. Let's talk about it and we'll see 
uh, what we need to do. All right, as far as I can see, that's pretty much all the uh, announcements. There'll be some other things, other upcoming events that uh, we'll have in the bulletin, hopefully for next week. But in the meantime, just be in prayer about Saturday. Be in prayer uh, for uh for our services and we'll be able to come together and have service again next Sunday. I've got several prayer requests that I want to mention. Let me tell you, last Sunday we missed the service. We have phenomenal outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And and yet, as I was telling the church, this was just a ripple in the water for the tsunami that's to come. And there was somebody else that actually had confirmed to me later that day that when I had said that about the ripple in the water, the first thing they thought of was a tsunami. The first thing they thought of was that huge wave coming in and crashing and everything. And, and that's just the water just beginning to tremble, just beginning to move. And so we had an amazing service. Well, you know, we can't have that kind of a service and people be refreshed and restored like that without the enemy coming in immediately. And let me tell you, this has been a hard week for the people of Oak Grove. We've had a lot of people that have been in the hospital. We've had a lot of people that have been sick. We're not able to have service right now because of COVID outbreaks. So I've got several requests I'm gonna mention before we go to the Lord in prayer. First of all, we need to continue to remember Brother Lewis Hardy. Uh, he's not been a whole lot of change from the past couple of days from what Ms. Joan was saying. Uh, he does still have the tubes in that's helping to drain the fluid uh, out of his uh, head, but uh, we just need to continue to pray for his recovery and pray that his strength will come to him. And please don't forget to uh, remember Sister Joan in prayer as well. This has been very exhausting for her, having to go back and forth to the hospital and just the fact of, of having to see her husband going through this, it, it's very trying. So please make sure that you lift up Sister Joan and the whole family in your prayers as well. Um, also, I received a, a message yesterday from someone in the church uh, about a, a gentleman by the name of Phil Lindsay. He's 84 years old, and he is uh, indirectly related to somebody here in the church. And um, he had fallen and broken his hip. And they're talking about doing surgery, but the problem is he has a weak heart. So we need to continue to remember Phil Lindsay in our prayers as well, that God will uh, minister in that situation. I also want to mention, let's continue to remember Kayla, uh, Tony and Tanya's daughter. Uh, the surgery for her gallbladder went great. Everything's wonderful there. The baby is just fine, so we give God praise for that. But she's struggling with a couple other uh, uh, infections, and it just makes it difficult for her. It's been a hard pregnancy for her, but we're going to continue to believe that God is going to continue to heal her and keep his hand upon her and upon that baby. So continue to remember her in prayer. We've got a praise report as well as a prayer request. Brother Jerry Thompson was taken to the hospital the other day, uh, was not feeling well. Uh, they checked some, uh, some things as far as in his blood concerning his heart, and they actually admitted him. And they were going to do a heart cath yesterday, or tomorrow rather, and they were going to have to go through the groin, and uh, which is a much more uh, difficult process, I guess, to recover from. You've got to lay straight. If any of you have had that done, it's, it's not a lot of fun. Well, we found out this morning that they decided they were going to do the heart cath this morning. And they were able to do it in the wrist. And he only had one stent that he had to have put in. So we praise God for that. And uh, he may actually get to come home today, uh, depending on what the doctors say, if not tomorrow. But uh, just continue to remember Brother Jerry and Sister Rita in your prayers. Also, uh, we need to remember Reagan Gaskins. Uh, the, she's just a little baby. She's only about three months old, but apparently she's having some respiratory issues. Uh, she's got something viral. RSV apparently is going big time in this area. And so we need to pray that God will touch her and will heal her uh, little body. As a matter of fact, Maddie Hilton was in the hospital as well. Uh, because of some respiratory issues. And thank God it wasn't COVID, it wasn't RSV. Uh, they said that she was asthmatic, but uh, we need to continue to pray for her, that God will strengthen her and uh, will we'll help her as well. Uh, let's remember uh, Sheldon Wiggins. He had mentioned to me about how he was just having some difficulties, some problems. Praise the Lord, the doctors found out that the problems were being caused by a medicine he was on. And so they're taking him off of that medicine, but he still has some, uh, some ways to go as far as just feeling his strength back and feeling good again. So let's remember uh, Brother Sheldon in our prayers. Let's remember those who have in this area that have been affected with COVID. Uh, there are people in our church. Uh, I know that uh, Sarah Brinson and her son Luke, and I would mention their names because she had posted it on Facebook. Don't think that I'm, uh, that I'm making a HIPAA violation or anything, but Sarah and Luke uh, tested positive for COVID. 
And so we need to pray for them, that God will help them in their recovery. But then there, we found out there were others that are ne not necessarily in our church, but are associated with people in our church that have come down with COVID. Just about the time we think it's all dying down and everybody's feeling safe, here it comes again. And I know that you probably have a prayer request. Let me just say this. If there's a prayer request that I haven't mentioned today, then, and it's very possible with everything that's come, I, I very possibly just forgot. But if there's a prayer request that you have, comment on this video, because I promise you, I'll go back and I will look at the notifications, and I will pray for whatever uh, prayer request that you put down on this video. So please make sure and comment on that with your prayer request. And I know I've taken a lot of time to do announcements and prayer. We haven't even gotten into the service itself, but we needed to cover this first before we could move on. But let's have a word of prayer. You pray right where you are in your home. I know that, you know, you may be sitting there on the couch with a cup of coffee or, or maybe an a egg or waffle on your lap or whatever it is, but you can still pray right now, right where you are. You don't have to be in a sanctuary to reach God because your prayers go to where he is. So let's pray together. Don't just listen to the preacher pray and say, okay, that's good enough. I have my eyes closed so that counts. You pray as well. Your church family needs your prayers. Your church, you would want prayers. You would want others to be praying. Your church family needs your prayers. Let's pray together as we open up today. Almighty Father, we come to you, Father, thanking you for all your blessings, for everything that you have done for us, everything that you have, have birthed in us, Father. God, we thank you for the miracles that we have seen over and over and over again. Most importantly, the miracle of us changing from a sinner to a saint, from us going from, uh, from judgment, going to reward and going to uh, being with you, Father. And we thank you for that miracle that transforms us from the old to the new. But God, we thank you for healings and for uh, blessings of, of financial aspects and, and, and emotional blessings and, and just you showing yourself time and time and time again. God, we thank you for all that you are to us and all that you are through us, Lord. And we pray that you will help us to crucify our flesh daily and to give ourselves to you each and every day and that you'll be able to continue to do a work in us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I come to you asking that you will touch every one of these needs that I've mentioned today. Lord, there are miracles that need to take place in what I've said today. There are people that need to, to have your touch right now in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit minister to them right now where they are. God, I know we're not able to assemble today. I know we're not able to come into the church today and to be together and to hear the prayers of the rest of the saints. But Lord, I believe that there are those that are listening right now at home that are praying, that are lifting up these people in the name of Jesus, that are lifting up their brothers and sisters in Christ when they're in their time of weakness and not able to stand on their own, that they're coming and they're lifting them up and carrying them until they're able to walk on their own, God. Lord, as our pastor, Father, I, just, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will touch each and every one of these needs. Let healing come. Let restoration come. Let recovery come. Bring protection upon them in Jesus' name. And Lord, as I go into the rest of the service to Today. Father, I pray that you'll be with me, that as I bring your word, that it will minister through this Facebook uh, live stream. God, that it will minister to somebody. It will touch their hearts, Father, and that they'll respond to it in the name of Jesus. We glorify you for everything you give and everything you are. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and there is none, there is nobody that is like you. We give you glory and praise and honor for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to, I'm going to sing a song real quickly. And I practiced it a little bit before service. And I got nervous and almost said, never mind, I'm not going to do this. But I think I've worked it, worked it out. But um, in the meantime, if you have your Bible with you, obviously don't turn to it on your phone because you're watching Facebook Live. So if you have a Bible with you, if you want to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. And I'm not going to take a long time today, probably, to uh, speak to you. But Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6 is where I'm going to be reading from. But I want you to worship with me as I sing this song. We get to these places where we... We just wonder how we're going to be able to make it to uh, to the next point. We wonder how we're going to be able to get through the battle that we're about to face or that we're in the middle of. And what we forget is all the times that God has already gotten us through. Think about those of you who are, are battling something right now. Maybe you're battling a family issue. 
Maybe you're battling a financial issue. You've got more bills than you got money. Maybe you're battling a health issue and it's not looking good. Or depression or anxiety or addiction or whatever it may be. And you think, I'm not going to be able to get through this battle. But now I want you to think back in your life to the times when God has shown up. To the times when God has shown himself faithful. And that he has come through just in the nick of time. And then my question to you is this. If God did it before, doesn't that mean he can do it again? Amen. Worship with me as I sing this today. I hear you when you call. I want to ride 
States, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I pray that God will add his blessing to the reading of the word this morning. Amen. I want to speak to you for just a few moments today about when you can't see God. When you can't see God. Now, most of you are probably saying, well, I never see God. We, we can't see God because His glory is so magnificent. I mean, look at what it happened with Moses just seeing the tail end of the glory of God and, and his, his face shone and he had to wear a veil. But you know, there's times when we go through difficulties. That we go through trials where we feel like God is nowhere around. Have you ever been in that place before? Have you ever been in that place where you felt like your prayers got about as far as the tip of your nose and then they just fell to the ground? That God wasn't listening? That he had checked out? That there was a sign that he put on heaven's door that said out to lunch? Or that, you know, for, for whatever reason it was, maybe you thought it was your fault. Maybe you thought, well, I, I must not be living right, and so God's not listening to me. But have you ever been in that place where you felt like that God was absent? I know I have. I know there have been times that I have prayed, and I felt like God was just completely ignoring me. I know that there have been times that I have, have asked God to move in a situation because it seemed like everything around the situation was impossible. It seemed like everything around the situation, all it was was bad. All it was was, was just an attack of the enemy and God was nowhere to be found. He was just sitting back and letting it all happen. But the word says in Deuteronomy chapter 31, and it says that again in, in Hebrews chapter 13, if I'm not mistaken, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I, God will not fail us, is what it said in Deuteronomy. He's not going to fail us in our time of need. That being said, there are times when we don't see God, but we know he's got to be there because his word says that he is. 
Many of you may not realize this, but in the book of Esther, there is not one reference to God or to the name of God. Now you might be saying, well, that's impossible. It's part of the Bible. Go back and read Esther from beginning to end. In the book of Esther, it is the only book where the name of God is not mentioned. You don't hear Jehovah, you don't hear Yahweh, you don't even hear God, you don't hear the Lord, you don't hear any of that. It's never mentioned. And because of that, some people think, well, Esther didn't actually happen. That must have just been a poem or been an allegory or, or something of that nature. But I don't believe that for a moment. I believe every, every word that's in this book is here for a reason. I believe that every book that made it to Scripture, I believe that's what God wanted to have in Scripture. That's what God wanted to be there. There's a purpose for it. Now, I don't know how many of you have read the book of Esther. I don't know how many of you know the story of Esther. It's, a, it's a, a wonderful story of God's provision and deliverance, and yet it doesn't mention God in one part of the book. They've even got a VeggieTales movie that came out about Esther, and it's a, a cute little VeggieTales thing. I don't know if you've ever watched VeggieTales. Uh, some of it is just really cute and really great, and some of it you're sort of scratching your head, you know. <laughs> the older you get, I think the more you scratch your head about the talking vegetables and all that. But in the book of Esther, it's a great story of God's provision and deliverance, and yet his name is never mentioned. So my question with this is, if God's name is not mentioned, does that mean that he wasn't there? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean that whatsoever. Throughout the entire book, we can see where God's hand was moving behind the scenes, even when his name was not on the lips of the people. And I'm just going to give you two real quick examples. Just two real quick examples in the book of Esther. And as I said, if you've never read the book of Esther, go back and read it and watch what God does in that book. It's amazing the way that things happen and, and it seems like there's happenstance or coincidence. But in all actuality, it's God moving and setting things up. The first example I want to give you in the very first chapter of Esther. This is what got everything started. Queen Vashti was the, the queen of the queen uh, of the, the king, he, he she was the uh, she was his wife, and she was very beautiful, and he wanted to show her off because he was meeting with the other princes in the region, and he wanted to show off his beautiful wife. I, I love my beautiful wife. I want to show her off all the time. She's behind the phone right now, and have her turn it around if it wouldn't get some of you guys seasickness. But uh, but I'm so proud of my wife, and I want to show her off at the same time. I don't want other guys looking at her, but you know how that goes. But uh, but Queen Vashti was so beautiful that he wanted to show her off to the princes of the region. Well, she had already gone to bed. She was already at the house, and she didn't feel like being used in that way. Maybe she was getting some American feminism in her at that time. I don't know, but she didn't want to be used in that way and, and shown as a trophy wife. So she refused the request of the king. She knew that refusal would result in some sort of punishment up to the possibility of death. He could have actually put her to death for refusing to come and be shown to the princes of the region. And yet she still refused a seemingly simple request. But there was a reason that she did. Maybe God hardened her heart at that moment because he had a work that had to be done. Because had she acted in an obedient manner and pleased the king, there would have been no search for another queen. There would not have been a search to find someone to replace Queen Vashti. She would have been obedient, she would have gone, shown herself off, done one of these things, and then been done with it and moved on. But because she refused a request that seemed to be a very simple thing, and some of you ladies may say, well, that's not simple, I don't mean to be paraded like that. But the king was asking her. The king made a request. You know, when the king makes a request, it's not really a request. It's a command. But she said no. He said, fine. I'm going to find myself a new queen. And that started the search that ended up finding Esther and putting Esther in a place and in a position where she could save her people. Now, those of you who don't know the story of Esther, let me just give you a quick, quick, quick overview 
of it. I don't have time to get into all the details of everything. It's an amazing, uh, uh, it's an amazing account of what happened uh, and the way that God delivered his people. But uh, let me just tell you what happened. She refused to show herself to the princes of the region. The king got mad, said, I'm going to find another queen. They started looking through all the people, and, and they found Esther. And Esther was beautiful, and, and her beauty just surpassed everyone else's. He said, she's my queen. Well, the problem was that the king's right-hand man, Haman, that he wanted to destroy the people, uh, the, the Jewish people, because of Mordecai, who was actually, uh, uh, it was actually um, Esther's uncle, that uh, he got mad at him, and so Haman wanted to destroy all his people. Well, Esther was one of those people, but Haman didn't know that the queen was, was Jewish, didn't know that the queen was, an, was uh, of, the, of the Hebrew people. And so he goes through all, all this and is trying to get them, uh, convince the king to, uh, to kill all the Jews, and the king agreed to it for whatever reason. But Esther was in a place where she was able to come up and she was able to say, why are you wanting to kill my people? And the king didn't understand. And she explained that she was of the Hebrew people and that Mordecai had been trying to kill uh, her people. And the king instead had Haman put to death on the very gallows that he had built to kill the Hebrews. That's the story in a nutshell. I believe it's a, a real quick nutshell right there. But go back and read that when you have an opportunity and let the Holy Spirit speak to you through that. But if, if Queen Vashti had not refused the request of the king, then Esther could not have been put in position to save her people. Another example, in, chapter, uh, in Esther chapter 2, verses 21 through 23, Mordecai was instrumental in uncovering a plot to kill the king. Nothing was done except that Mordecai's name and the details of the failed coup were written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. In chapter 6, or chapters later in the book, the king just happened to have a night when he couldn't sleep, so he had the book read to him, the book of Chronicles. And as he was having this read to him, he realized, he remembered the story, he remembered what had happened, how Mordecai had saved his life, and he realized he had done nothing to honor Mordecai. And, and so he asked which advisor was in the court to help him determine how to honor Mordecai. He said, okay, who's here? Who's one of my advisors that are here? I need help to figure out how to honor Mordecai. You know who it was? Haman, the very man who despised Mordecai and wanted him dead. It just so happened to be Haman who was only in the court because he was there to ask the king specifically to kill Mordecai. He was there to ask the king to kill Mordecai, and the king was glad to see Haman because he wanted to have the, uh, Haman tell him how to honor Mordecai. And so the king never mentioned Mordecai by name, but he, he was saying that there was somebody that he needed to honor him, and what would you do? And Haman thought this whole time that the king was talking about him. So, of course, Haman said, oh, well, I would do this, I would do that. He thought of a very lavish and very public way to show honor because he thought it was all going to be for him. Only to be told that Haman was to bestow the honor that Haman came up with upon the very man he was trying to have executed. Isn't God good? Isn't God good the way that he will work? He will take your enemy's plan and use it instead to lift you up. You know, it was in, in Genesis where we see with Joseph where the, the brothers were, were apologizing. They were afraid they were going to be killed. That Joseph was going to have their lives taken from them because they had sold him into slavery. And he said, don't worry about it because what you meant for evil, what the enemy of my soul meant for evil, God meant for good. What you've got to know about Esther and what you've got to know about all your situations is this. Is that even though you don't know why things happen, you know, people say, well, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens. It's because of a plan. It's not just a reason. Uh, to say everything happens for a reason seems to be a very vague uh, uh, answer, and it could apply to anything, nature or, or the spirits or aliens or whatever. But when we say everything happens because God has a plan, now we're specifically saying that we understand that God is the one who is in control of our lives. We don't do anything without God guiding us and leading us in that way. There, are, there have been jobs that I have gotten that I thought I was going to go this way and the door slammed and I thought, God, why aren't you answering my prayers? And it was because God had something far greater in store for me. Some of you uh, may have had... Um 
People that you were dating and, and or you were going to marry and they were just the love of your life and you thought everything was going to be great and then everything came crashing down. And you got upset and you wondered, God, why are you, why are you forsaking me? God, why are you letting me go through this? And what you didn't understand was that God had to get rid of the rubbish to bring in the reward. God had to get rid of, of all the garbage and all the things that were not good for you because he had something so much better in store. Maybe it was a, a college you were trying to get into and you, it was the one you wanted to get into and it didn't happen. But you got into another college and then that's where you came to know Christ or that's where you got baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's where you came to know your spouse or whatever it may be. We can see the hand of God in situations in our lives even when we don't realize that it's Him. If we stop and we think about things that happen in history that just so happened. To come about. And because of that, this was the end result. Believe me, it was the hand of God the whole time. It just so happened, when World War II was going on, that the Japanese came up with a great idea. They, the, the Axis uh, powers were winning. Everybody in Europe was, was uh, surrendering. The, the Americans were saying, we're out of this. We're not going to be a part of this. Y'all just figure it out among yourselves and we'll talk to the winner. All this was happening. They were in a place of victory. And all of a sudden, somebody got the bright idea. You know what we need to do? We need to sneak attack the Americans. And let them know we're going to be doing stuff in the South Pacific. And they need to stay away. And we need to show them how strong we are. So they came up with the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. The very next day, the United States officially declared that we were at war with Japan and Germany and Italy, the Axis powers. And it turned the tide of the war. A war that it seemed like Hitler had already won. He was going to annihilate the Jewish people, was going to eliminate them from the face of the earth. But then they woke the sleeping giant, and the Americans came in, and within a matter of just a couple of years, Hitler was completely defeated. Japan was defeated. Italy just sort of ran screaming and hollering and saying, we don't want any part of this. And the Jewish people that still remain were safe again. There have been so many other times in history that we see where uh, a storm or, or perfect weather or you know, whatever it was, that it made it possible for something great and, and world-altering to happen. That's the hand of God. Although it may, not, it may seem that God is silent or is absent in your situation, he is always, always, always working to bring you to the place or to the place for which you are destined. Let me try to say that again. Although it may seem that God is silent or even absent in your situation, he is always working to bring you to the place for which you are destined. Sometimes bad things Uncomfortable things, disappointing things, discouraging things have to happen in our lives because that's the only way we're going to get on the path that God has for us. That's the only way we're going to get to that place that God wants us to be. So don't look at your troubles and your trials as God punishing you. Maybe God is pushing you in the direction in which you need to go. I talked about on Wednesday about why the wilderness. If you didn't watch or if you weren't here for that, which you know, many of you weren't, but if you weren't here for that last Wednesday, go back into our videos on this page and, and look at that, why the wilderness. It's not the, the one from two weeks ago didn't turn out to be why the wilderness. It was something completely different. But the one from last week, why the wilderness. And I talked about how the fact people look at the wilderness as bad things. If I'm stuck in the wilderness, it's troubles and trials and I'm abandoned and all this kind of thing. But the, the wilderness is a holy place because it's the place of God speaking. 
And he lets us go into the wilderness so that we're not distracted by everything else in the world. So he can speak to our hearts and tell us what it is that he's wanting us to do. Don't look at your trials as a punishment. Don't look at your tribulations as God is, is attacking me because I didn't do something right. I didn't pray enough. I didn't read my word enough. It's not necessarily that. In fact, most of the time, that's not it. That's not the way that God works. What he is doing, though, is he's meaning to get your attention. And he's meaning to move you in a direction so that he can use you the way that he wants to use you. It is not necessary, by the way, I want you to hear this. It is not necessary for you to see the hand of God. For you to experience its effect. There are things that happen in our lives that we don't even realize it was God until everything is all said and done. There are things that happen in our lives that we have no idea that it's actually God's will. Until the situation's over and then all of a sudden our hindsight becomes 2020. And we're able to look back and say, oh, I see where God moved in that situation. I see where God did this. I see where God did that. When you don't see God, instead of being discouraged, be excited. Because though you don't see him, you know because his word says, you know he's still there. And you know he's working behind the scenes. You know he's doing something. You may not see it right now. But it's coming. He's doing something. Now, I told you before that uh, until this walk is over, and then probably for about four months afterwards, I'm going to talk about the walk. I'm going to mention things. Uh, shortly after we came to Oak Grove, I decided to get together with a cardiologist. And I was, I'll be honest with you. Uh, there's a lot of heart disease in my family. My, my father has really bad heart disease. My mother died of a heart attack. Um, and I've been a big boy. I've been working on losing weight, but I've, I've been much heavier than I am right now. And I have been for a long time. And with me being diabetic as well, I knew that my heart was at risk. And what I, what I said, I'm going to be honest with you about something, is that because of me not knowing what was going on with my heart, I've had anxiety attacks about it. I would begin to have a panic attack and I would feel the pressure in my chest and I would immediately begin to think, am I about to have a heart attack? Am I about to die? Am I as young as I used to be and all that? And it would just make the whole thing worse. And, and uh, times that I've had to go to the ER because I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't my heart. And then they told me that I was just having an anxiety attack or panic attack that was probably caused because I thought I was having a heart attack. So I just decided, I'm going to the cardiologist and to find out where I stand. I just want, I want a baseline, I want to know where I stand. So I went to the cardiologist. He told me I had to lose weight, uh, which every doctor except for my dentist has told me that before. And uh, he said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this test, and this test, it's, it's a, a calcium scoring test, a cardiac scoring test, and it's going to scan your, your body, and we're going to see if you have any buildup in your arteries, and we're going to see if uh, uh, you have any blockages that we need to be watching. And I said, okay, that's fine. So I took that test, came back with a perfect score. They said there's absolutely no buildup, no blockage whatsoever. You're, you're clean. According to what I was reading online, if you got the score that I scored, you have less than a 5% chance of a cardiac event. And I praise God for that. He said, now we're going to do the stress test. And we did the stress test. He said, your heart is functioning perfectly. There's absolutely no problem with your heart. Everything looks great. You're just too fat. You've got to get in shape. Okay, I got you. I, I hear you, Doc. Now, get out of my way. i got to go to Krispy Kreme. So, uh, but I was, I was so thankful for that. But here's, here's the part that I want you to understand. This happened before God told me I was going to go on this walk. This happened before he instructed me to do this walk. If I had not already received a clean bill of health from my cardiologist, I would have been more likely to disobey it. I would have been more likely to say, this is not a possibility. I can't do this because I can't be walking all this way and fall over and die of a heart attack and leave my family without anything. I can't do that. So I, 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 this can't be God. God knows that, that I probably have heart issues, and so it can't be God, so I'm not going to obey. But God knew he was about to tell me to do this. And he wanted my heart and my mind to be clear that he had this under control and that he had been keeping his hand upon my body. And that even though 
this heart disease run to my family that he's protecting me from that in the name of Jesus. And I praise God for it because he has a work for me to do. He was working behind the scenes. I thought all he was doing was letting me know that my heart was okay. I had no idea he was setting me up for the obedience that he was expecting from me later. Just because you don't see the hand of God doesn't mean he's absent in your situation. Now, as you're sitting there at home today, some of you may be going through something where you just haven't felt God anywhere, where you felt like God has abandoned you, where you just wondered why God has left you high and dry. The entire book of Esther, you never hear the name of God, but throughout the entire book, you see his hand. In your life, you may have times where you don't see the hand of God. But begin to think back and look at the way that you've seen his hand. Look at the way that he is a minister. Look at the way that he has moved. And you didn't even recognize that it was him. What you're going through right now, God is allowing He's allowing it. You might say that's impossible because I'm, 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 I've got cancer, I've got COVID, or I've got uh, uh, heart disease, or, or my marriage is failing. Or, or God is working. He is always working for our good and for his plan. We may not understand it until it's all said and done. But we can stand on the word. When he says in Deuteronomy 31, 6, he it is that goes with you. Who's going with you every step of the way? Maybe your spouse is, maybe your mom or dad are, maybe, maybe your, uh, your children are, maybe you've got a best friend that's walking with you. But understand beyond and above all of that, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. You may not see God, but you know, there's an old hymn that says, standing somewhere in the shadows, you will find him. He's not always right in front of us, but he is always, always with us. Amen. Father, I thank you that there's never a time that I have ever lived or ever will live. There's never a place that I have ever gone or ever will go where you are not there. You will still be there. Even when I turn my back on you, God, you're still there. Even when I forget to to praise you and to lift you up. Even when I forget to read your word and to study, even when I forget to pray and to communicate with you, God, you're still there just waiting. And when I'm going through my difficulties and I'm going through my trials and I'm going through my tribulations, God, you are still there. And I thank you that though I may not see you, I see your hand. I see the work that you're doing. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to trust you. I pray that you will help us to believe on you, that you have us in your hand, and that every step of our walk, it's been ordained, it's been ordered, it's been set by your Holy Spirit. And I pray for those that are struggling today. Would you do something today for them? God, those that, that feel like you've abandoned them, would you do something today? Whatever it may be, just to show them that you're there. Would you do something today just to show them that you're working? That it may build their faith. And that it may build their hope that everything is going to be all right. God, I thank you for this time that you've given me to minister to your people. I pray it's been a blessing to them. I pray that it has touched them. I pray it's spoken to their hearts. And I give you praise for all that you are and the fact that you will never leave me nor forsake me. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I pray that something I said was a blessing to you. And it's right now, 1159. I told you I'd get you out of here by noon. And I'm true to my word. So thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget, no service on Wednesday. But we will be live streaming at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. And uh, just be praying for those that I mentioned earlier today. Pray that God will just cause this COVID outbreak to disintegrate and that we'll be able to meet together again. Be praying for your pastor this Saturday. I need your prayers. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We love you.